Welcome back. In this session, we're going to start our clay project, and it's going to look something like this. It's going to be kind of an oddly shaped organic form. And in, on the inside, it's going to be hollow, and there's going to be little beads on the inside, and it's going to be a little hand shaker. Okay, this one I made um, a while ago and it's kind of a rounded shape, but I decided I'd like to go for something that was a little bit more organic looking. So we're going to make one that looks more like this. And today we're going to walk through the steps of how to make it. Alright, first we're just going to talk about a few words though. Form. Form is a three-dimensional shape. So here, this shaker will be a form because it will take up space and it's also a shape. A shape could be anything like our um, geometric shapes like squares or it could be an organic amorphous shape that has no shape which is kind of what we're going to be making um, an or amorphous or organic kind of shape and we're going to turn it into a form. Next, we're going to talk about pattern. A pattern is whenever you repeat something like a line or shape or maybe even color in a regular fashion. So you have you know square, 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 square and make a pattern or a triangle, circle, triangle, circle and you can make a pattern this way. In um, on the surface of my form here, you can see that I've repeated different things to make various patterns. I've got patterns on the top and patterns on the bottom. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about is texture. Texture is how something feels. Something could be bumpy or smooth or rough. And on our um, shaker, we want it to feel like something. We want that texture to end up feeling like something and having either you know a smooth edge or a bumpy piece here or a raised piece there. So we're going to work on creating texture, which is one of our elements of art. So, to get started, there's a few supplies you're going to need. You're going to need your canvas workboard that looks like this. You're going to need a piece of cardboard to set your work on at the end. Once you get your cardboard, please write your name on it. I'm going to write Mr. Lundgren on mine. Of course, you would write your name, not Mr. Lundgren, right? And your final work is going to go on top of there so we know who it belongs to next week. Then, you're going to need, of course, a little chunk of clay. I'll hand out um, kind of a piece of clay about as large as a grapefruit, between an orange and a grapefruit, and you're just going to start by kind of squishing that a little flat. Then you're going to need uh, a roller, two rulers that are, or actually four rulers, they're taped together, two together, and two together, and you're going to use those there. A little cup of water to join your clay and you're going to need a paper towel. Keep your paper towel dry. Do not get it wet. Okay, and then you're going to have a variety of tools to make your texture that will be in your box. All right. First, you're going to take this and you can just take the heel of your hand and kind of squish it down onto your canvas workboard. And then once you get that squished down, you could also take it in your hands and just kind of turn it and squeeze it between your fingers and your palm like you're kind of pinching between your fingers and your palm and just kind of get it squished down into a disc. Then take your rulers and set it on either side like this and take your rolling pin and just roll it back and forth. This does not have to be a perfect shape. It can be kind of whatever organic -y shape that it turns out to be. Um, but the deal is you want your rulers to stop your um, rolling pin from making your clay too thin. You don't want it to be really thin on one side and thick on the other side. Okay, now I'm done. My, my uh, slab is one even thickness all the way through and I can set my um, rulers and my rolling pin aside. And now I'm going to take one of my popsicle sticks. There should be a popsicle stick inside of your toolbox. And I'm just going to trim away the extra clay on the side so there's no cracks or crunchy, bumpy parts. And if you want to be a little creative and make it wiggly, here or there, like I just kind of wiggled in the side there, do that. And you're just going to set this leftover clay aside, which we're going to end up using uh, in just a minute. All right. So there's my kind of final organic shape. Now I'm going to take some tools and press them into the surface. Uh, here's an old marker that I've uh, taken apart. And I'm just going to take this and gently push it into this surface to make a circle and then I'm going to repeat that. 
and I'm just going to make a little line of circles here repeating that to make a what? that's right a pattern so we want to have that pattern I want you to have at least three patterns how many? right that's right three patterns um, there's going to be these little pieces of foam in your box and if you take the little piece of foam and you just set it on here and you kind of rock it back and forth and wiggle it around you'll get whatever shape it is so here's my triangle and I'm going to um, make a little triangle pattern I'm gonna turn my triangle so they kind of fit into each other alright like that and like I said you need to have three patterns so right now I'm in the middle of making my second pattern with the triangle here and I'm realizing that this little space is empty so I'm gonna go back and fill it with a couple little circles to kind of fill that area in for my pattern and then I'm gonna use this tool here and I'm just gonna take the edge of it and overlap it and press it in to the surface to make a textured pattern like this and now if you want to have more than three like you just get really excited about pushing things into the surface and making patterns you make as many patterns as you want but I want to be able to see that it truly is a pattern. I don't want so many different things squished into the surface that it just looks like a bunch of junk squished into the surface. All right. Now we're done with this part. We're going to just set this part um, aside for the moment. Uh, you can just actually take this whole thing and move it out of the way. I'm just going to set it off, off to the side. And then you're going to take your dry paper towel and your leftover little chunks. You're going to take these leftover little chunks and you're just going to roll them into little teeny balls like that. All right? And you're just going to make a whole bunch of them. Okay? As many as we have time for. I'm going to give you probably 5, maybe 10 minutes to make a bunch of little balls. Now, the little balls are what's inside and what makes the sound. Okay? Depending on how many balls you have, let's say you've got 100 of them, um, then it'll sound different than if you only have five or six. If you have big balls, like large circly balls, that will sound different than if you have a, a bunch of little teeny ones. All right, so depending on how you make the little beads for the inside, um, that will determine what your shaker sounds like. All right, so take the next couple minutes here and make a bunch of little balls. Just put them on your dry paper towel. And Mr. Lundgren, you can just let me this play without voice, or you can uh, fast forward it. Okay, now that we've got a significant amount of little balls there, you're going to just kind of gently shake them off to the side. And you're going to start wrapping them into your paper towel. So I'm just going to put one here. I'm going to cover it over with my paper towel. And I'm just going to gently keep kind of rolling them in to my paper towel. Make sure that you don't squish them. Okay, you don't want to squish them at all. Um, and what we're doing is we're putting them into the paper towel so that they have paper towel in between them so that they don't stick together um, inside of your uh, shaker. All right, if we have them all separated, they're going to dry out separately inside your shaker, and then they won't get all stuck together. Because uh, what I'd, I've done this project before, and kids would often get their shakers back, and the little beads wouldn't make any sound because they were too wet, and they started um, sticking together and then they wouldn't make sound, which is really unfortunate. We don't want that to happen. So make sure that you set these inside different pieces of that paper towel so that as they um, sit there, they get dried out with that paper towel. Now you're gonna take your clay slab that, we've had, that we had before, and you're going to take it and just flip it over so that your textures are down and your smooth pieces on the inside. Now you're going to take your paper towel and just kind of set it in the middle and you're going to start bending this over 
to make the sides come together. That's where the little water comes in. You're going to just get your finger wet and you're just going to smooth some water along the edge. Just like that. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it over and squish these two sides together ever so gently. And you can kind of see my paper towel is still inside there. And I'm going to take this side here and squish this one around. And then I'm going to take this side and bend it up to meet over here. And maybe I'll take this and just bend it over this way so that it can squish together like that. All right. So I'm just going to bend this together. And then as I decide, I don't, I don't look like this little piece over here, so I'm just going to cut it off real quick because it's just not working for me. So if you need to adjust, you can. Make sure that you get water in between the seams, though, otherwise it won't stick together. Once you have all your seams put together, I want you to take um, either uh, an old pencil or something uh, like a chopstick or whatever else we have in there. And you're just going to take your pencil and you're going to kind of put a border pattern along your seam like that. And then I'm going to put one right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to help squish the edges together and make sure that they don't come apart. Okay, as well as make a really cool design around the seam. It'll almost look like it's been sewn or stuck together with rivets or something and it'll kind of have a an interesting neat look when you're done. Alright, and I'm going to do this bottom piece here as well. Alright, now when you're done it'll look something like that. Alright, and you can see how different this one looks than this one. They have kind of the same textured feel on the surface they have different patterns on the surface and they're both three-dimensional forms but this one looks very different than this one and every one's will look different and that's good when you're done what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your shaker and you're gonna set it on your cardboard piece like that then you're gonna take your cardboard piece and set it into the tray at, at in the middle of your table alright and that's how we make the form for our organic form shaker.